This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now another Proudly We Hail one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Conrad, I believe you said this was an especially entertaining and charming story. Yes, Ken, it is. It's a moving story about early America. The title of our play is Folk Tale, and we journey to the mountains of Tennessee for a chapter of the lives of some interesting people. Our first act will begin after this very important message. I'd like to point out that every man and every woman in the United States has a definite part in the stepped-up program of national defense. Young women between 18 and 34 who can qualify are urgently needed for service in the Women's Army Corps. Remember, by enlisting in the Women's Army Corps, you'll enjoy the gratifying feeling of satisfaction that comes in doing your part for your country during these critical times. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Talk to the local recruiter and learn all the facts. Volunteer today. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Nat Adams, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Folk Tale. One morning, one morning, one morning in May, I spied a fair maiden a raking of hay. Mm -hmm. Beyond the river lay the forest, the forest thick and dark, moving in a green sea ever west toward the mountains. Along the river, the land was rich and good the sweet grass taller than a long rifle. Pine and beech, oak and spruce flanked the hills reaching upward. You could bet a good coonskin cap this was a place for settlement, and that some small part of the great human tide sweeping outward from the east would spill into the valley and call it home. Slack your jaw, Fitz. If you don't mind my saying so, you've got a voice like a gumbaroo. Morning, Ethan. I'd like to see how you can hear my voice with all that racket you're making. I got very acute ears, my friend. I can hear everything that's going on from Wildemont Creek to Tamon Flats. You don't tell me. Must be a mighty informed man. Most informedest man I know. <laughs> well, then maybe you can hear where Sam Morgan's at right now. I could be dayed a week and know the answer to that. Well, don't keep it to yourself. If and I've been dayed that long, I can't talk so well. Oh, select your role, hang the man. Ah! Oh. I ain't been dayed that long. He's up on the ridge hunting cockeyed alligators. <laughs> what you in such an all fired hurry to find Sam for? Appears to me, Ethan, as blacksmith of this here community, you... yeah. Appears to me we got company. Yeah, stranger. Riding a prime horse. Looks like a fancy den. Well, good morning. Good morning. Could this be River Hollow? If it ain't, stranger, and we all been mighty mistook. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it fair takes the eye. And Eden in the wilderness. We like it tolerable well. Of course, in the spring, there's the flitterics. They's a mount dangerous. Woods is always crawling with hide behinds, and the lumberlangs is apt to strike when you least expect them. And then every year, just about this time, when everything's all colored up, there's a band of wild Indians comes up and skunk gulch and scalps a few citizens. Uh, yeah? uh, some say they're Wyandots, some say Mingos. Now, Ethan here thinks they're a cross between Shawnees and Black Bars. Well, right. well, that, that must have been the bunch I ran into back near the Gap. Mm -hmm. you, you mean you, you met up with some Indians? I most certainly did. What happened? Well, it was just about sunup when they jumped me. Must have been about 50, 60 of them hollering and yelling something fierce. No. Yeah, I rode hard with the bullets and arrows flying all around me. I was not knowing the country. I turned off the trail and into a narrow canyon. They followed me. You can imagine how I felt when I came smack up against a 300-foot cliff and no way out. Well, what happened? 
Well, just what you'd expect. They killed me. <laughs> they killed him. <laughs> he wouldn't be pulling our leg, would he, bitch? No. Oh, stranger, I'm glad to make your acquaintance. Name is Ethan Taylor. This here is Fitzgerald. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pleasure, gentlemen. I'm Nat Adams. <laughs> Nat Adams, eh? Any kind of Jedediah Adams lives up by Castalga Falls? No, I don't think so. The well, country's full of Adams. Room for one more? Oh, plenty of room here if you aim to settle. No finer spot from Detroit to New Orleans. Uh, he ain't been near the place, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was right for once. Well, they told me about this place back in Clarksburg. Uh -huh. I thought I'd have a look. Well, uh, if I ain't too bold, uh, you a uh, family man? No, no, I'm alone. No family, just Cindy here. Uh, smart amount of horse flesh. Oh, <laughs> she's that. How many families in this valley? Old ain't crowded. Fifty, maybe sixty. Oh, I think I'll ride down and have a look around. Easy, 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 that girl. I'm pleased to have met you both. See you again soon, I trust. Uh -huh. That Adams, eh? Told a middling good story. <laughs> they killed him. <laughs> you notice the brass buckles on his boots? Bitch! Now, why don't you go find Sam Morgan and let me get at my work? You ain't got no manners, Ethan. I'm the most unmannered critter I know. Now, let me beat you. Like your old man's a man. Oh. He rode in the mountains one morning. Well, good day, mistress. Good day, sir. This the Morgan house? It is. I'm looking for Samuel Morgan. Is he to home? He should be presently, sir. Could I be of help? Thank you, but I don't think so. Um, I'll come back later. Well, if, you, if you care to wait, you're welcome. Well, that's very kind of you, but you sure it won't be inconvenient? Oh, it'll be none. <laughs> if you know anything of butter churning, you'd be of a help. <laughs> well, I'll do my best, mistress. <laughs> come in. I'm sure Paul won't be long. He went off hunting this morning. Couldn't have picked a better day. Well, all days are like to him when it comes to that. He's more at home in the woods than he is here. Sit there, sir. Well, can I help you do that? Oh, no. I shouldn't have spoken of it. This is woman's work, and if Pa should come a finding you a churning, he'd be angry. Have you come far? My home was in Williamsburg, in Virginia. In Virginia? And you've come all the way here to see Pa? Oh, no, no, not exactly. They told me at the trading post he was the man to see. Oh, you... You gonna settle here? Well, I couldn't find a prettier spot, do you think? None that I've seen. It's beautiful now, is it not? The forest all in color and the air like May wine. <laughs> Only it's October. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't look like a farmer, if I may speak boldly. No, no. What do I look like, mistress, if I may ask boldly? I don't really know. I'm not sour like a parson and not rough like a woodsman. Are you a trader? No, no, not a trader. Huh. I don't know if there's anything else a man could be in these parts. Well, let's just say I'm a man who had an itch. An itch to find the frontier. Now that I've found it, I've an itch to settle on it and practice a trade that's sadly neglected here. What, pray tell, would that be? You're not a lawyer. <laughs> you know, you better churn faster. That... Jim, I'm back. Where be you? Out here, Pa. I got me a prime pain to order to make. Huh? Pa, this gentleman come to call on you. Name's Nathaniel Adams, Mr. Morgan. You don't say. New to these parts, ain't you? Yes, rode in this morning. Couldn't have waited at Blunt's Tavern till I got back, could you? I invited Mr. Adams in, Pa. Don't speak well for your judgment, gal. Pa. Oh. Well, I'm sorry if I'm intruded, sir. They said at the trading post you were the man to talk to. I'll state my business and be gone. State it. You don't have a school in this valley. As far as I can tell, there isn't one within a hundred miles. I plan to start one. A school teacher? You stay shut, Deb. You can plan all you want, mister, and you're right. Ain't no school in a hundred miles because folks here don't need one. Only need men here. Men to farm, men to hunt, and to fight if it needs be. Don't need no fancy pants book learning. I don't allow you'd be welcome. Well, I'll give it a try anyway. Now, don't get me riled, son. If I say there ain't no school, there ain't, and that's what I say. Now, let's all part peaceable and you get on your way. It's not up to you to say, Pa. Just because they made you head of the council don't mean you can decide this. Everyone will have to vote on Child, it. Child, churn that butter and keep your mouth quiet. But... You can go out that way, Mr. Adams. Oh, stranger, oh, stranger, you've come for to stay. You're not welcome, stranger, down Tennessee way. Mm -hmm. If I ain't being too bodacious, would you 
won't sit down and stay set. Reminds me of a parcel of cougars with a quilt and me. <laughs> ah, there ain't no need of me telling you why this chivalry was called. For over a week now, this here Ancy Daisy schoolmarm's been at the guttling around, staring up this peaceful community with talk of book learning. He came to me first, and I told him straight out. Now, I'm against it. Ain't no need for a school here. Too much work for everybody to be wasting time making marks on the paper. Seems as though some of you folks don't agree. So we've got to take a vote. More waste of time. I ain't got anything else to say. But if you vote them to stay, don't expect no help from me. Frontier ain't no place for a man who can't do a man's work. Uh, you got anything you want to say, Mr. Adams, before Weems takes a vote? Well, only that Mr. Morgan seems to have the wrong idea. This school isn't for him. Although I'm sure he could use it. It's for children, so when they grow up, they won't be pig-headed, narrow-minded, unneighborly, and just plain stupid. You talk mighty pert, mister. Let's see how you back your words. Now, Sam, we ain't gonna have no trouble here. Everybody's all dressed up in their fancy duds. I got me a new doe skin shirt on. I ain't getting it all muddied up over your inclination. That's right. You sell, Sam Morgan, so we can go to school. All right, all right, then. All them that's forever holler having a school and Mr. Adams being schoolmaster, lift the claw. Oh, stranger, will you be a stranger no more? Mr. Adams? Uh, Mr. Adams? Oh. Oh, is something wrong, Mistress Morgan? Oh, no. No, I... I just want to say that I'm... Oh, I'm glad we're going to have a school here. Well, that's very kind of you. You don't agree with your father. Oh, Pa's a little stubborn and set in his ways. You mustn't mind. Well, I'll try not to. Um, can I walk you home? Oh, no. No, I don't think that'd be wise. Well, will anyone be able to go to your school? Of course. There's a big room in the trading post I'll be using for a start. You, um... You know some older person who'd like to attend? Yes, I would. My mother taught me how to write my name and to read a little, but oh, I should like to know more, much more. Well, I shall feel honored. But if I may say it, you speak as an educated person, not as most of the others. Oh, I owe that to Mother, too. She was educated and lived in a great white house in Baltimore. She used to tell me about it. She, she died two years ago with the lung fever. She was... Frail and small and not meant for this kind of life. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You have no brothers or sisters? I have four brothers. They're all out there in the wilderness somewhere. We seldom see them. Never get on home. Well, Paul, is there any need to sneak up on a body? Don't sass me, gal. Just do as I say. Well, Good night, Mistress Morgan. Good night, Mr. Adams. I ain't no bully boy. Bar don't waste his time on a rabbit, so I'm giving you fair warning, Mr. Schoolmarm. Stay away from my daughter. Stay away from my house and stay away to me. Else I'll just naturally be obliged to make tallow out of your hide. Is that clear in your head? Perfectly clear, Mr. Morgan. Good night. Ah, chicken livered. Hear the stranger whistling. Hear the nightingale sing. Hear the stranger Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Nat Adams in the proudly we hail production, Folktale, will return in just a moment for the second act. Your growing United States Army needs registered nurses. This is an opportunity for registered nurses to be of vital service to their country by offering their services to the Army Nurse Corps. You'll become a commissioned officer and have excellent opportunities to further your career. You'll have the benefit of working with the finest medical equipment in the world, and you'll learn the newest professional techniques in anesthesia, operating room procedure, nursing administration, and many, many others. So get all the facts today. Do this by writing or wiring the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, 
And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Nat Adams, we present the second act of Folk Tale. The summer must pass and the winter must be the stranger no longer a stranger is he. Good day, Ethan. Good day, Nat. Cindy cast a shoe? Afraid so. Yeah. Well, you've come to the right place. Yeah, it looks like snow again. Uh-huh. Got that smell. Yeah, it's been a mighty cold winter. Mm. Son, this ain't no winter at all. Remember one winter, maybe 10, maybe 20 years back? Ain't so good on dates. Was all fired cold one day, blame sun got froze up in the sky at half past nine. Hmm, amazing. What happened? Well, so far as I recollect, everything stood still for three whole days. Just shook and shivered. Yeah. Finally, one of them big shooting stars come along, hit the sun a good lick, and <laughs> shook it up enough to break the ice around it. Lucky thing, if that shooting star hadn't come, everything might still be standing, shivering and shaking. Yeah, that's a horrible thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's things going at the schoolhouse? Fine, fine. Uh, why don't you cut yourself? I'm holding night classes now for the older folks. Uh, can't teach an old horse new tricks. Good for the young'uns, though. Won't always be wilderness here. Too bad Sam's taking such a darn old dislike to you. Yeah. Wish I knew how to make friends with him. Well, only way to take a catamount is in a fight. <laughs> well, I'll not fight with him. Mm, can't say as I blame you. He's a regular ring-tailed roar. Now, hold still, Cindy. The stranger he courted both trouble and love. Mm. Easy, Cindy, easy. Well, Mistress Morgan, is anything wrong? Oh, no, I, I saw you ride out to the fort, so I followed you. Oh, he... well, um... He hasn't allowed me to come to your school. You know that. Yes, yes, I heard. Well, I, I don't want to get you in trouble with him because I know what he can be like when he's... Well, I... I, I understand. <laughs> well, that coonskin cap and those buckskins, you look like a woodsman. But I don't play the part very well. Is that it? Oh, you can't help that. You're a school teacher. Well, of course, if I were of the alligator breed that Ethan speaks so colorfully about, I'd have a showdown with him. Well, I'm not blaming you. I... I want to ask you a favor. Well, ask it. Easy, Cindy, easy. If, well, if I could meet you somewhere each day, you could give me lessons to do, and I suppose that's brazen of me, but Well, I I'd want... be glad to meet you. Although I don't like going behind his back. But it's the only way, unless... Wherever you say and whenever you say, I'll be there. Love blossomed in winter, love waited for spring. Mm -hmm. Heck, yes, yeah, sir. Ain't no one in River Hollow don't know of it but Sam himself. Then don't you be the one to open your jaw to him. Well, he's bound to find out one day. Been meeting like that all winter long. I know the critter once with a nose nigh on to ten feet long was called a wing dag. You must be a near relation. Now, of course, you ain't know nothing about it. What well, ain't my business, I don't attend to. Well, you'll attend the funeral, I hope. Oh. I can see the tombstone now. Here lies Nat Adams, which got cruelly torn to bits by a bar. Name of Sam Morgan. Oh, get up there. Note another farming do you remind me of. Love flowered in spring while the nightingale sings. Deborah. Deborah. Oh, Nat. I'm sorry I kept you waiting, but. I was beginning to be afraid that Pod. Oh, no, no fear. See, he and a party crossed the river hunting. I might have known a spring day like this. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Mm. You add to its beauty, Deborah. I... I picked some laurel while I was waiting. It goes well with you. Don't you? Don't you want to look at the work I've done? Later. Deborah, this is no way. Meeting in secret like thieves. You are a thief. 
You've stolen my heart. I couldn't help it, Deborah. Will you take mine in return? Oh, Ned. Ned, I love you so. Kiss me again. Deborah. Deborah, I want you for my wife. We'll tell him. Oh. And he can do his worst. I'll no longer play the gentleman. If I have to fight him for you, I'll fight him. No, you don't know how terrible he can be. Well, it's the only way. Well, we don't have to stay here. I'll go with you anyway. Deborah, I've never run from any man. The only reason I've kept away from him was because of you. Now, because of you, I'll face him. And we'll put an end to acting like children. And if he should hurt you or kill you, I... He'll I'll... do neither. And now let's not spoil the rest of the afternoon. When it's over, we'll go down to him. If we walk up there on that ridge, we'll be able to see all over the valley. Oh, I love the spring. And I love my love. <laughs> then give me a hand, you brazen woman. And we'll walk through the fields together. Always together, Matt. Always. Well, I guess it's time we went down. The light's starting to fade. I hate to leave. I know. We'll come back another day. Tomorrow? We'll see. You're very lovely, Deborah. A queen in homespun. <laughs> My king in buckskin. <laughs> now, ain't that real pretty? <gasps> Ain't they a pair, Zeb? Like a turtle dove, say, hey, Jesse? Get behind me, Deborah. Get behind me. I'll handle this. We don't mean no harm, friend. Then just stand easy right where you are. <laughs> Is he ordering us, Jesse? <laughs> Sounds that way. I don't exactly take to ordering, friend. He's got a knife there, Jesse. Acts real unneighborly. Get the gal, boy, while I let a little daylight into him. I won't take... Run, Jesse! You... Run, Deborah. Run. Ah, you done killed him. I'll fix you. <laughs> Deborah, Run. Run, get help! Stay away from me! Oh. Sad news, sad news to the nightingale king. Well, is he gonna live? Yeah, wouldn't be surprised none if all them women don't kill him with attention. He ain't no weakling. Then I won't feel so bad whooping him out of town. You ain't a forgiven man, Sam. Heart mule, I'd say. Yeah, a liver skunk a-going behind my back like a weasel. When I think of what might have happened to Deborah if them two rattlesnakes had got her. But they didn't, Sam. And that school teacher did as prime a job as you could have ever done yourself. Them two has been wanted for every crime twas ever known. Both had guns. All Nat had was a knife. He finishes one of them so messed up t'other, he ain't much left to hang. And he did it with a bullet in him, too. If I was in your place, I'd be downright thankful. Well, I ain't. None of it never would have happened if... Uh, do you know my own daughter won't obey me no more? Stays there nursing him night and day. Says she's gonna marry him when the circuit rider comes through. Well, when I get done with him, he ain't gonna stand marrying for a long time. If ever. The mountains were silent, no nightingale song. The stranger he waited, he didn't wait long. Mr. Morgan, I understand you've been waiting till I got my strength back. That's right. Well, I've got it back. I'm marrying Deborah with or without your consent. Folks around here seem to think I should be shaking your hand for what you did. No one ever figured you for one of the alligator breed, them citified clothes and all that book learning. Well, I'm not wearing them now, so you needn't be afraid of dirtying them. Oh, I ain't. Never you fear. When you come here in the fall, I told you to stay away from my daughter. Didn't seem to take much effect on you, neither of you. Well, do you want to talk or fight? <laughs> well, I just wanted to say, I've been thinking a bit. 
Feels like I've been severing different kinds of a jackass. And I don't rightly think it's fitting to have a go around with my future son-in-law. Of course, if you insist. A wedding in springtime. away with no one noticing? Well, the coach and four are waiting out back. <laughs> Mrs. Adams. In the guise of Ethan's rig. Oh, Nat. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> As one ringtail roarer to another, plooper perfect. <laughs> to know this here chivalry beats anything that ever was. Man's got to marry his daughter proper life. Yeah, I feel like singing a song. And now you do, you link short gilly galoo. I'll pour this here keg of on your hand and down you see your drink. Yeah. Right now, I can't think of a better way to die. See like you rose, the man. The mountains did echo while the nightingales sing. He wed the young maiden while the nightingales sing. Our star, Conrad Nagel, will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. Here is an opportunity for young women who are dietitians, physical therapists, or occupational therapists. It's a chance for advancement and to be of service to your country. Find out about the opportunities that can be yours by volunteering in the Women's Medical Specialist Corps. Write or wire the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. Supporting Mr. Nagel in the role of Deborah was Helen Christen. Featured on this show was folk singer John Drury. Folk tale was written by DeWitt Cobb. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Next week on Proudly We Hail, we'll present our Christmas program, friends. And we sincerely hope that you'll join us over this same station. Until then, goodbye and a Merry Christmas. <laughs>